In this module, we'll go ahead and walk through a demo of creating external identity sources for vCenter and NSXT. Okay, to get started, we're going to be in the Azure portal uh, in the Azure VMware Solution Private Cloud Object. Now, what we've done initially to get things started is I've already gone ahead and exported the certs from the domain controllers. I've created a storage account and created a container within Azure Blob Storage. This will allow us to upload those certs and then use those to configure a secure identity source. So now that I've done the legwork already, that's where we'll pick it up. So if we go into our menu, go to storage accounts, go to the storage account I created. From here, we will go to containers. And you can see I've created uh, an SSL container. Once we're in here, you can see the certs that I've already uploaded. So for this one, we're gonna go ahead and just work with the AVS cert. What we'll do is we will generate a SAS. And uh, this is just gonna allow us access to this certificate. So we'll generate the SAS token. If we scroll down, we can see the actual SAS token and then the SAS URL. So we'll copy the SAS URL because that's what we'll need to configure this identity source. If we go back home, go to our Azure VMware solution and our private cloud object. Now we're back at the main screen. What we'll do here is we will actually go to run commands. And from run commands, we have a list of things that we can do here. Now, here we can go ahead and create identity sources. We can add users to our cloud admin group. We can even do things like uh, you know get and configure storage policies. What we're gonna do here is we'll configure a uh, LDAP-S identity source. And when we click this, this is a script that's gonna execute. So initially we can actually give it a group name should we decide that we want the script to add an identity source and then uh, add a group to the cloud admin role. But we're gonna save that second part for later. What we'll do here is we will go ahead and paste our SAS URL. We will add our credentials. So in this case, this is our, our domain credentials and I'm using a service account called domain join. Grab the password. Then we'll provide it um, a base DN group. And this is just so that it knows where to search for our groups. Then we'll give it a base DN users. Again, this is so it can search for users. And then we'll give it the primary URL for our Active uh, Directory server. So in this case, we're using LDAP S and we're going to give it the FQDN. And we will also give it the port 636 because it is secure. Now uh, we will need to give it a domain alias, which is you know generally just the uh, first portion of the domain name. So in my case, it is just stickers. And then our domain name is stickers.corp. Then we can give it a display name. In this case, I just try to keep it simple and I'll make it stickers.corp. Go ahead and scroll down. Here under details, uh, we can tell it to retain this script and this information uh, for a certain amount of time. So defaults to 60. Uh, we'll also specify a name for execution. This needs to be unique. So if you're executing multiple camp commands in a row, what I've done is next to uh, exec one, I just kind of remove the one and I put in the date and time or, or something of that nature. And then the timeout is 10 minutes by default. Because we're just running one script, we'll go ahead and leave all the, def the defaults here and click run. So this will get submitted. We can click on run execution status and we can see our command is running. You can also see that it was completed successfully. And we could drill into this if we want, but we're not gonna go through that right now. What we'll do is we'll go back to packages and we'll go ahead and get external identity sources. So another script that will run, and again, retaining for up to 60 days in the history, a unique uh, name for execution, and then the timeout of three minutes. We'll go ahead and run this. And this will actually give us a list. It'll get all the identity sources that are configured. So if we click on run execution status, see it's running, see it's successful. If we click on this, now you can see the details of the script that was run. You can see errors and warnings and things, but we're interested in the output. So the output here tells us that we've added an active directory, uh, the alias of stickers, uh, all the information we provided, right? So um, the username that we used to authenticate, the friendly name, the LDAP server, the user and group base DN, and then the name of the domain. So we can close that. Now let's go back and let's add uh, one of our Active Directory groups to the cloud admin role. So here, what we're gonna do is just specify the domain again. So stickers.corp. 
And the group name we're gonna use here is AVS admins. And this is what we have uh, on our in inside of our Active Directory. Again, the details will remain the same. Um, normally you can leave these as defaults. Go ahead and run that. And check the execution status. So it's running. Uh, it should complete, generally these run pretty quickly, within a minute or two, sometimes up to five or 10 minutes, depending, but generally they're very fast. So now that we have those, uh, that command run, that added the group successfully, uh, we can verify that either by clicking on the status of that group, or we can come down here and actually go say, hey, get all the cloud admin groups that we have configured. So again, nothing, nothing to specify here, we can just simply run it. And when we run this and check the status, it's running, it will complete successfully. And then when we log in here or we click in here, we can see the output is uh, the AVS admins group as part of the stickers.corp domain um, has been added to the vSphere ad admins role. Now this is a little misleading because it says domain stickers.corp up here. You can ignore that. This is simply adding it to the, uh, the vCenter role. So we can go ahead and close that and now we're good from an identity source perspective. So let's go ahead and test it. So if we scroll back up and we click on identity, here's where we can see our URLs for vCenter and NSX, as well as our uh, default usernames and passwords. Uh, in this case, we'll go ahead and copy the web client URL for vCenter and open a new tab. Let's paste that and accept our default certificates. Launch the vSphere client. Again, accept those certificates. And now we can go ahead and log in with our domain credentials. So in this case, I'm using my login at stickers.corp and the default password that I have set up. And when I log in, now I have cloud admin privileges uh, for my Active Directory account. And you can see here, I can click on the cluster and I can navigate and do all the things that I need to do. But you can see I'm logged in as my domain account instead of the cloud admin account, which is what we don't want to use on a regular basis. So I'll go ahead and log out here and let's move on to configuring uh, RBAC for NSXT. So in this case, um, we're not going to be using run commands anymore. NSXT is sort of a standalone um, situation as it pertains to configuring an identity source. So we'll go ahead and, and copy the URL for NSX Manager, open a new tab, and log in here. So we're going to log in with the default admin credentials, and I need to go back and copy the password here. And so we'll paste here and log into NSX Manager. Now you can see I'm logged in as admin. Uh, we'll select system and select users and roles. Now here you can see that we do not have an identity source configured for NSX. Easy enough, we click on LDAP and then we say add an identity source. Here we're going to give it a name. So this is going to be stickers.corp like we did previously. And same thing here, stickers.corp for the uh, domain. Our base DN, same thing. We need to be able to search for that particular uh, user or group when, in, when we're searching to add users in groups to roles. So we will go ahead and add that. And then we need to specify an LDAP server. So we'll say set, add an LDAP server. Here we will give it the same LDAP server we were using before. So AVS dco1.stickers.corp. And here we will again select LDAP S. You can see that the port automatically changes for security. Uh, the bind identity is the same thing. We're going to use our um, service account that we use to join to the domain and the password for that service account. Then we'll go ahead and select check status. Once we check the status, it says, hey, do you want to accept the certificate? Yes. And that imports the certificate into this text box here. We can go ahead and hit add. You can see that the connection status is successful. And then we can say apply. Now we can see that there's one LDAP server configured here. Hit save, identity source was added successfully. And we can check the status just to make sure. Now the identity source has been added. So now we can go ahead and actually add our users and groups uh, to uh, user roles that are pre-configured in NSX. Of course, you can go ahead and clone these roles and create your own custom roles. Uh, for this demo, we're just going to go ahead and add our admin group to the enterprise admin uh, role. So we'll say add, add a role assignment for LDAP. When we click on search domain, it auto-populates with the domain we've added. 
when we start to search, it will automatically start searching as we type. So if we start typing AVS admins, you can see that it automatically pops up. We can select that. For our roles, we will select enterprise admin and then save. So now you can see AVS admin. So any, any user that's a part of AVS admins now has the enterprise admin role for NSX manager. So let's log out and test that. So if I log in with my domain credentials here, stickers.corp, and then my super secure password, and log in, we can see that the UI changes. I'm a brand new user logging in. So now it's saying, hey, don't forget, you can go light and dark mode, you can customize and, and do a bunch of different things. I know that, we don't need to show that again, so I got it. Uh, but you can see here, we're running in dark mode. You can see I'm logged in as uh, myself on this domain and I have uh, full enterprise access to everything within NSX Manager. Okay, so to recap, we generated a shared access signature or SAS for a domain controller certificate stored in Azure Blob. We used Azure Run commands to configure an identity source for vCenter, add a domain group to the cloud admin role, verify the identity source, and then verify that the domain group was added to the cloud admin role. We also configured an identity source for NSXT and then added a domain group to an NSX role. Next up, we're going to prepare to host our VMs by configuring DNS, DHCP, and NSX segments.